welcome everyone. Um, a bit daunting. <laughs> Not sure I was expecting everyone. Um, welcome to the Ninja panel. Um, and uh, oh, we'll introduce ourselves. I think we'll start at the end there. Timbo. Hello. Working for you. Hello. Oh, yeah, more Timbo. Re Hello. Press it on your chin. Have a oh, uh, yeah, more Timbo. Game balancer and ninja. Uh, yep, uh, Mod Hunter. I'm a senior technical developer. Uh, Mod Kelpie, project manager and lead ninja. Mod man. <laughs> you don't need to press it. Testing. Yeah, it works. Uh, Mod Manti, a ninja QA. Uh, I'm Zamorak. <laughs> uh, I'm Mod KOC. I'm a uh, QA analyst and also a ninja, would you believe? Uh, yeah, so together we make up one half of the ninja team. Uh, there is at least one other ninja here today. Mob Pi is also walking around um, with his Pi pad. So if you do have any s submissions for him, then uh, do please approach him. Um, so today we have like prepared a couple of questions that we, we uh, posted on the forums, took some, took some stuff from you guys already um, that we'll talk about today. And then we'll open it up to the floor for you guys as well. Um, so to kind of kick off, just to give you an idea of like the way we work, um, as a ninja team, we have two kind of backlogs. We've got a backlog for all the little ninja fixes, and then we've got a backlog for the kind of projects. And the projects are kind of just very like small projects compared to all like the quests and stuff all the other teams do. Um, so the, we kind of work through both of these backlogs. We kind of tend to maybe do like the first half of the week, kind of work on a number of ninja fixes to release for the following week, and then for the rest of the week, work on projects. Um, but then at times, like the kind of the, our schedule is a little bit messed up with uh, maybe some projects like Dartscape that we released uh, very recently. Um, that's been mainly done within the Ninja team. Um, but yeah, uh, we can answer more questions about projects and stuff in a bit. I think, well, Hunter, you're going to talk a bit about how we actually select Ninja fixes. Uh, yeah, so uh, with Ninja fixes, we pretty much pick the ideas up from. Like everywhere, uh, forums, uh, Twitter, uh, Reddit, uh, pretty much everywhere that you can post to us, we'll see your suggestions and find them. Uh, pretty much what we're looking for is uh, ideally the stuff that's like quick and high impact. Like that's most likely to get done just as it's easy to get done. A lot of people see it, a lot of people notice it. Something, for example, like you always have to click through this chat box every time you do something, and it's really irritating. Something like that we can get rid of really quickly, and it just improves the flow of gameplay for everyone very simply. Uh, but we do take on uh, larger suggestions, and uh, generally we pick something that has, like, uh, say, if we're picking an idea from Reddit, we'll go for something that has a lot of support, a lot of up uh, upvotes in the comments, and just that generally seems to have a lot of interest in uh, the players who've approached it. <laughs> <laughs> Got down. I thought that might happen at some point today. <laughs> well, yeah. And ninja fixes kill gods. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly do. We ninja fix some uh, some hot glue. Cool. Um, cool. Uh, so, and then on projects, I think it'd be nice to kind of reveal to you some of the projects that we are working on at the moment or looking to do within uh, kind of like late this year or maybe early next year. I think um, I'm going to start with you, Timbo, and God books. So yeah, those God books, eh? They're pretty rubbish, aren't they? <laughs> um, so what we want to do is we want to add them. Well, we want to let you uh, put them in your pocket slot. So not only do you, ha you don't have to sacrifice an offhand, you don't have to sacrifice Drygor or Singularity or anything to use them. And they'll be able to go in your pocket slot. We also want to give them some decent stats. So maybe give them some strength bonuses, some um, uh, prayer bonuses. So maybe something along those lines, some, some like static bonuses that can be useful in combat that you might not bring a scrimshaw along for, but you'd bring like this along for Slayer. Um, and then the cool thing is we want to add like an active bonus. So you can activate a, a god book just like uh, a scrimshaw, and it will degrade, and you can recharge it with pages. Um, but it'll actually do one of the special abilities from one of the uh, God Wars bosses. So the Saradomen book would do the Ziliana uh, Lightning Cloud, uh, if you have the ancient book, you would do an ice prison, a chance to hit to do ice prisons. Uh, if you have the Guthix book, you can have a sort of edicts fall down and smash and do some AOE damage. And we want to sort of balance them to be pretty useful, like because like scrimshaws are pretty good. Uh, we want to keep them sort of best in slot, 
But these extra cool effects like just smashing things with Grad or with using the Bandos book or um, doing Creel's like smash through prayers uh, ability. Those sorts of things are really cool and really iconic. And we want to bring those to God books and uh, sort of make them worthwhile and make them balanced. And that's what we do with God books. Sweet. Um, uh, Manti, you are going to be talking about uh, your Quest Point Master Cape. So, uh, the Quest Point Master Cape, it's been requested, it's been asked for many years, uh, pretty much as soon as the actual Quest Point Cape was released. Um, mostly what has been asked has been just putting a specific trim, uh, like getting 299s, so if you do a specific thing like, let's say, the task set, you would be getting a trim on your Quest Point Cape. Uh, being with a ninja, it we also developed the master capes, so it only made sense to go down the same route and just go a, you know, a step above, a step beyond, and create something even better. So the Quest Point master cape, a lot of people have actually wanted it to be kind of like a true trim cape. That is definitely not the intention. Uh, it has to be directly tied to quests to an extent. It's not a minigame cape, it's not a task set cape, it's not a music cape. It's everything that has to do with quests. And because quests, they're not only puzzles, they're not, all, not only difficult or challenging bosses, uh, they also include a huge chunk of lore. So because there's a lot of lore, the Quest Point Master Cape is also going to be kind of like a lore cape. Uh, it's mostly going to be focusing on lore. Um, every single quest, post-quest reward, that's trackable in some way, because a lot of people ask to include every single book there is in the game. Just as a requirement, you have to obtain every single book there is. That is not doable, uh, because a lot of books, they're not tracked, they're one-off, uh, you can miss them. And let's be honest, not all of them are law, nor quest related. So if you do have any suggestions, there's firm guidelines in place uh, to make the cape future-proof. So after a new quest has been released, whether there's any debate if a requirement should be on the cape, uh, just looking at the guidelines should give a clear answer. Uh, so there's no going back and forth, which we sometimes do actually see with the trim and the completionist capes. So. Yeah, to avoid that, strict guidelines. Um, we, know, we know what we're doing, and if you do have any suggestions, if you think that something has been missed, I think currently we're at about 200 uh, requirements. It's, it's on the Ninja forums, there's a sticky thread. Um, so if you do think anything has been missed, just go on the Ninja forums, tweet me, or post there, and I will look into it. A lot of people have also asked about an ETA. Um, because it's not a full ninja project, but well, it is a ninja project, but it's kind of a personal project that I'm doing in my free time because I'm QA. I don't get any time to go and develop things other than our tab times. Uh, but hopefully, I should be having more time now. And I hope it's going to be released sooner rather than later. Yeah, certainly with Darkscape, we were all kind of hands on deck with that. But now that we're kind of over the bump with that, there's definitely uh, more opportunity to give more time to that project. Um, and then, uh, Zamarak, uh, you're going to be talking about uh, the Defenders and the Associated Guilds. Yes, indeed. Uh, so who in here has used a Defender recently? Who in here has used a Defender recently? A Defender. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> This is, uh, this is exactly the point we're going to try and address. Um, we want to include uh, defenders for tier 70, 80, and 90 now. So we are uh, going to put uh, some new drops on the Barrows, the, uh, on Nex, and on the Calfight King. And you're going to upgrade your defenders as you have been in the Warriors Guild. Uh, so you'll need a tier 60 to be able to get the drop from Barrows. You need to be carrying a tier 70 to get it from Nex, and so on and so on. Um, we also want to make some magic and ranged ones too, uh, just to balance out that out a little bit. Uh, we've addressed the stats because we looked at them and the stats were all over the place. It was crazy. So we fixed those up a bit. Uh, we have a flat 3% accuracy bonus as well, which is great. Uh, we're letting you use shield abilities too. 
Uh, it has half the stats of a, an offhand weapon and half of a shield for that tier. So it's pretty balanced in that terms. Um, what else are we doing to it? I can't think now. I only looked at this the other day. Talk about the guilds. <laughs> the guilds. We also want to be looking at guilds too. Uh, so the Warriors Guild, uh, just going in there, there's a couple of things. It's just, oh, this is really annoying. Oh, we should probably change this. Oh, the XP here is really bad. Uh, so we're going to be fixing up the Warriors Guild a little bit. Uh, we've got a few ideas in mind for that too. And then we thought, right, we're going to be doing ranged and magic defenders. Where the hell are we going to put these? Um, so we looked at the Rangers Guild and went, what is this? This is some of the oldest content in the game. It's really bad. Uh, we're probably just going to rip some of that out and replace it with new, better versions of it. So um, I think the archery minigame, we're looking at making it sort of... Um, anyone remember the, uh, the, the cannon in Sheep Herder? Uh, sorry, is it Sheep Herder? Yeah, uh, Morning's End 1, you have to die the sheep. We're thinking that kind of minigame instead. Instead of just click on thing, wait for points. You, you love it, really. Come on. <laughs> Everyone loved painting those sheep. That was amazing. Yeah. yeah we'll have to add moving targets to that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Magic Defenders, we're thinking Magic Training Arena. People aren't really using that very much anymore. Uh, we fixed that up too as well, because that's got some really shoddy stuff in it too. Uh, just make it a bit more user friendly. Um, and yeah, the items you get from the bosses, you'll be able to use on all three of the defender types to upgrade them. That's about it, I think. Yeah, so um, we're kind of splitting it up. We're looking to do like the melee defenders uh, rework, um, hopefully launching that by the end of November. Um, and then for mage and range, it's going to take probably a bit longer, and we'll try and get that done as soon as possible, pretty much. We got, uh, so is that something that we have to go to the range guild to start with bronze? Afraid so. Well, a bronze yeah. equivalent, but yeah. So, so um, we just got asked if you'd have to go to the Rangers Guild and start with Tier 1 and then upgrade it for the, for the Range Defender and similarly for the Magic 1, and that is the plan, yeah. Would there be an option like there is with the Shield with the Kings to combine all three Defenders into one? So we just got asked if we could combine the Defenders. I don't think we're going to be doing that okay, for our hybrid you style. Oh, for sort of cosmetic, maybe? We don't really do we don't really do hybrid weapons, yeah. so it's kind of uh, not sure uh, that's not something we're, we're looking at not looking at doing, I don't think. Yeah, probably not initially, but definitely something we can then consider for the future, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, and then kind of like some of our ideas we have maybe for early next year. I kind of like the idea of doing a bit of a, like a spring clean. Um, with uh, with uh, a lot of our kind of content, old content that's in there, very much dead. Things like rat catchers and Delete, don't know. deleting the rat pits. Yeah, oh, ra yeah, rat pits. That's it. Not rat catchers. Um, uh, that can go as well, though. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a lot of people, well, maybe people do know, like uh, like the cats are quite coded poorly due to that sort of content. If we can like delete cats, de <laughs> not delete the cats, but if we can delete that stuff, we can improve cats and make them work like all other pets. And then it just makes working with pets a lot better in the future. Are we getting evolution of cat combat? <laughs> EOCC. <laughs> EOCC. Um, uh, so uh, I before I uh, open it up to kind of like your stuff, uh, your questions, I kind of want to just get a bit of feedback. So this kind of like, the Ninja Team has been the kind of bit of a new look Ninja Team for like a good like since like start of summer, I believe. Um, a little bit earlier than that, I think. Uh, and uh, so we've been doing kind of like we've been doing the Ninja fixes. We've been doing the projects. We've also been doing spotlights, which is where we kind of take an area of the game and focus a number of Ninja fixes on that one area of the game. Um, and I was just kind of like want to get your opinion on how it feels like we've done in uh, kind of splitting our work between like Ninja Fix and our projects that we release. So maybe we're like just a show of hands, like who feels like we sh should be dedicating more time to Ninja Fixes rather than projects? Any show of hands for that? So just a reminder of the projects we've done recently, the Arzans Workshop Spotlight, uh, the Hydrix Rebalance, uh, Fist of Guthix, what else have we done recently? They're, they're all spotlights. It's more for the, this one for projects. Like yeah, I'm just projects. giving ideas of things we've done recently. We haven't done any projects recently. <laughs> so many, so much stuff goes through our box. Oh, the virtual leveling is remember. a project, though. 
Uh, so uh, virtual leveling is virtual yeah. leveling high uh, out on Monday. Darkscape technically counts as a project. Uh, yeah. Multiple action bars. Uh, what yeah, do you think? So yeah, show of hands again. Who thinks we should be focusing more on the ninja fixes rather than projects? Uh, a couple. <laughs> All right, good to know. Um, okay then, uh, we'll now open it up to your question. So we've got Mod Tim with a microphone who... Uh, Mod Jack. Mod Jack, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a Mod Tim as well. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, raise your hand if you've got a question and the microphone will pass to you. So on the defenders, you're saying that we'll be able to use offensive and defensive abilities with them? Yes. Uh, so yes, they'll count as dual wielding and as shield abilities as well. But you have the effective stats of half an offhand and half a shield. Uh, and you've got some other like small bonuses, like uh, the 3% accuracy flat boosts. So. Don't you think even with the half damage, half damage resistance, it might be OP in terms of in-game uh, we're, we've made a couple of other nerfs alongside, uh, like uh, Revenge, for example, will only stack up half of the uh, the damage bonuses. So uh, we're looking at things like that to try and. But we also w don't want to make it too underwhelming that nobody's going to use them. Right. So this is the problem yeah. we've got in the first place. So the way I see it is that people will still switch shields for things like PVM, and that is absolutely fine. Like I think Defender sits perfectly in sort of Slayer, um, sort of like solo PVM, um, like maybe a Rex or maybe. You might still shield switch, but if you want to take an imagery, extra imagery slot, you can. Um, it shouldn't be too OP. Um, I think it's quite a niche use, rather than being like everyone's going. Oh my god! Oh my god! Dragor, Dragor offhands, uh, Dragor defenders. Like oh my god, it's going to be amazing. Um, yeah. That's what I think. Okay. Thanks. We hear a lot. We hear a lot about spaghetti code and that being a reason you can't do things. How long would it take to sort that out if players really wanted something like like best po boss pet? Uh, the boss pet overrides. I think it's not so much about the code. It's all the animation time that goes into it. Um, it is something that we are looking into. Um, we are actually trying to deliver that. Um, when I can't say. Uh, I think you sometimes you we talk about something. The community is you know, likes it, oh, the, and and then we kind of go quiet on it because maybe we've had some issues and stuff, and we kind of forget how much people really want it until it gets asked about, and we go, oh, well, actually no, like we weren't really thinking about doing that because of all the animation cost, and then everyone's like an uproar and like they really want it, and it, g it gives us another kick to yes, we should actually like work on this and get this done. Um, so boss pets overrides is something that it, we are looking at. Um, other stuff, it, it's very dependent on what it is. Uh, and it's not a case of that we can't do something because of spaghetti code. It's, uh, um, it's more about what we talk about, like the impact, and is it worth our time doing it? Uh, we can spend like months reworking something, but if then people don't really use it that much, it's just a nicety type thing. It doesn't really feel, uh, feel worth doing. Um, no, no. no. I, it's kind of a two-pronged question, so I apologize. When you report a bug in the bug fixes, um, which I do a lot, I'm one of those players, um, is there any way of getting some recognition for it being seen or uh, notified, which takes me on to my second part? Is there any way we could get messages in-game instead of having to go to the adventurer's log to see our messages, which are read or unread? Which you know, to be fair, is normally you've paid your monthly subscription, thank you very much. But it'd be really nice to be able to send a bug report and have some acknowledgement that someone somewhere down the line has read it, even if they're not going to action it, but just that little tiny bit of feedback from you. So I think the main problem here is the sheer amount that we get. Yeah, um, I appreciate So uh, player support do classify bugs for us, uh, but QA generally tend to investigate things. Uh, uh, either first thing in the morning or throughout the day in between uh, other projects. So it's a case of both doing project work and trying to keep on top of bug queues and making sure things are thrown in. Um, so the re uh, it's, a, it's a real problem trying to respond to people and just to say, um, oh yeah, 
that was great, cheers, or no, sorry, that's not a bug because we changed this. And uh, That's the thing that's been coming up with Darkscape, I mean, because is, we've changed is, so many things. Is there absolutely no way of just like an auto reply? It's just to give you some sort of acceptance that someone somewhere has seen it as opposed to it goes off into the ether and, and you don't report it again and again and again. Um, so that would be something to do with like our like internal systems and stuff. So um, as the Ninja team, it's not something we would look at, but it is something that I can definitely take to and ask them because I can, I can understand that we do quite commonly get people saying, oh, I've reported this bug, but obviously like they feel like it hasn't been addressed or hasn't been looked at when really we do. We do have put it into our system and stuff like that. So it's a good piece of feedback and it's something that we can take to the team yes, and see what they say. So the second prong to that question with the email system being mm -hmm. in the chat, is, is that something that's possible? So there'll be a tab which will have, you know, a, a preview of all our emails. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure too much on what's available with that. I think we at least used to have the link in the lobby for how many messages you've uh, recently had. I think that's about as much as we have available in game. Okay. Uh, it might be we could request from the engine team to get more information available, but they're quite busy with NXT and the new client, so it's likely to be low in their priority list to uh, get around to doing it, but there's no reason we can't ask for it. Okay, thank you. Just going back to your um, defenders, you as I mentioned earlier, you said specific item drops from various monsters. Would those items be tradable or you uh, don't use Currently it? they're all untradable um, to match the existing defenders. Good. Apparently, the people you hard, find it hard to speak. Hard, sorry, speak. Hear us? Is it how we're harding? Can people not hear us very well? Bit, bit echoey. Can't really do much. No, I'm um, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Try and speak a bit clearer if we can. Okay. Go falsetto. That'd be good. That would be good. Okay. Um, when I'm fishing rock tails at the Living Rocks cabin and I get um, orts for the um, clan avatar, if someone's dropped a load of stuff under and there's a lot of people on top of me, which there normally is in World 84, there's, I, can't see, I can't get it without filling my inventory with junk. Is it? And when I right click, all I get is a list of all the people on top of me. Is it... Um, possible to change it so the items are actually on top of that right click list so I can easily get the stuff that's on the floor. It's maybe something we can investigate for Togglescape perhaps. Uh, you've also got area looting as well, have you uh, tried using that at all? Uh, the area looting on tape. Uh, so if you turn your loot settings to area loot and uh, click something on the floor it will bring up an inventory and then you can pick what you want out of it. I uh, don't know if you want to try that but uh, we can look into that perhaps. Why do all seagulls not drop feathers? It's not true. It's uh, not true anymore, I believe. There, there, is a, there is only one that drops feathers. Just the one. Uh, I don't know. It was just never put in, and then it turned into some, the previous ninja team, like running joke, and uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, regarding the defenders, will the new uh, raid gear work with them? Uh, so the uh, you mean the set effect for the tier two armor? Yeah. Um, they do, but they are um, to they're scaled down. Uh, so I think the shield at tier ninety gives you about a third, uh, thirty forty percent. Um, it's about a third of that basically. So we've just scaled it down a bit more. So it does work, but it's not as effective. So that's another reason to use a shield in, uh, in high-tier high PVM.
Um, I was wondering if there's going to be like any clan updates like that would help clan owners. I know that you did broadcasting, which really helps, but like you can't check if someone's capped unless you're on the same world. And like as for muting people, like I found it easier to put them as recruit rank and set it so like anyone below corporal can't talk and that's my muting system but it means that no one can guest in my clan so i was wondering if you'd like have anything to support clan owners uh clan updates is something that we have trouble with uh, i think it's well well known um but it is something that i would really like to deliver something what exactly we do deliver uh next year i don't know but it would be something. It's something I've been talking to Mod Osborne with because there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of requests for clan stuff, and it isn't easy systems to use. It can be improved. Um, it's I, I can't commit to exactly what we'll do, um, but I would like to do a number of things uh, to make things easier, such as all the kind of settings, getting into clans, um, also like using your clan avatars and that sort of thing. It's all stuff that I would like to like like us to look at. Um, would you look on the um, clan forum that they have for like suggestions? So if I've got a suggestion, like post on there. Yeah, yeah, we, okay. we we definitely look at the clan forums. We got the, a number of the community management team um, look at that, and when we talk about clans with them, then they kind of like have the list that they've gathered and collated and provide to us. Okay, okay. So regarding her question before about uh, clan orts, this question I think was asked last year at the Ninja QA. <clears throat> Why don't they just come into our inventory? Um, because I want to remove them all together probably. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's something that, it's something I keep on saying that I'd like us to spotlight, like a kind of like clan avatar thing. Um, maybe like everyone, as far as I'm aware, pretty much everyone just uses the clan avatars for the skilling buff. And maybe it's something we can then just make all avatars have the skilling buff and then you can choose one of the other ones to go alongside it or something like that. Um, it's just, we just need to get it done. <laughs> yeah. And then my follow-on question is a little bit different and it might not pertain to your guys' team at all because I know it would be a large project. But currently there's so many different accounts that are linked to RuneScape, you've got old school, you've got classic, you've got RS3, you've got all of your Iron Man accounts, Darkscape now, and now, you know, some of them you can log in with your main account, and it's the same name, and it's the same, you know, whatever, but some of them aren't, and you have to make a whole new account to do that. So, as far as making like a master account, where all of them are then linked in, so you just log in, and it's like, do you want to play RS3 today? Do you want to play Classic, instead of having to log into a different browser or whatever? Yeah, certainly with the introduction of Darkscape, that's brought that topic to like the top again, and it's, it's, it isn't something for Ninja, or it could be something that partly involves us, it involves a lot of other teams. Um, it's kind of been something that I've been discussing with Mods Connor about, and seeing if there's anything we can do uh, very early stages with that. Not sure where it's going to go, to be honest with you. All right, thanks. Sorry, just going back to the clan avatar. Um, when you build the avatar, you are obviously given three choices. So you do the 10% or the 6% in Citadel and the skilling buff and what have you. Um, and then you upgrade your avatar. So you get three. And then you mess up and put the wrong thing in, like collect orts and summoning, and you forget to put the skilling buff on it. And the only way to change that is to remove your clan avatar and rebuild it. Is there any way that we could simply change those three options, please? Because I might have messed up at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think our clan did the same thing. Yeah, um, uh, yeah if, uh, if we can, when we look at clan avatars, if that's something we can do. Um, you know, it's the sort of what I'm saying with like lots of other stuff. It's like the impact and the time that goes into it. Um, if it is something that we can do, then yeah, I would like to do that. Thank you. If it was up to you, what would you fix next in the game? Well, it kind of is up to us somewhat. <laughs> so maybe Timbo, do you anything? I'd like to do a lot of changes to the Grand Exchange. I think. Like um, a lot of like making it, just having the buyouts on items, being able to view the cooldowns, 
Um, being able to do a, bit, a few more different things with the Grand Exchange, probably for me. Yeah, mine tends to be the stuff that you'd never actually really see. So I pretty much do it with every project that I work on. I kind of effectively unravel some of the spaghetti code and fix what I can. And that's effectively what I'd like to do more of in larger doses. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's something that you kind of don't really see is that we do do like stuff that's kind of you not player facing. It's stuff to try and improve the code of the game and stuff that then makes you stuff that we do, but stuff that all the other teams do a lot more easier as well. How about you guys? Um, I would say skilling XP rate inconsistencies because there's quite a few old pieces of content that are definitely difficult to do and they are not rewarding in any way. So, yeah, would, would, like, those to see, would like to see those being buffed. Uh, I'd like to fix all of the inventory icons that have broken borders. I'm building a big list. There's loads. It's, it's a really small thing, but it's really irritating <laughs> to me. Cool. Well, I uh, expect all these suggestions on Monday then. <laughs> okay then. More questions. Uh, any chance of um, clan-only high scores? There is. There is already. You mean in, within the clan or? Yeah, just, for, just for the clan, not oh, the right, okay. whole skill or anything. Just. Uh, so that anything to do with high scores involves the web team. So it's not just uh, ninja team. Uh, and web team also have a huge backlog of stuff. So compared to all the other things that they're working on at this time. Uh, unlikely to be any time soon. It is something they've kind of put to them several times in the past. It's not just the data that needs to be collated um, can be used for a good number of things. Um, so it has something kind of put to them before in the past, but unfortunately there's just been other things that have been more important than that at this time. Can I ask one more? Yeah, um, this is a clan, mate. Um, is there going to be any item or Money um, sinks released in the future. Invention. Invention. <laughs> All right. Clan member. Also, also defenders. Oh, yeah, defenders. Could we please get the ability to add Avas Alerta onto the Tyran Wind Quiver 4? I think if you've unlocked that, you sort of deserve that, and it's just annoying whenever I lose my comp cape to see piles of arrows and bolts on the floor. Please. Yeah. I don't see why not. I mean, maybe. But we're not very keen on combining a lot of items. Like, if we could unmake the comp cape, I definitely would. Um, because I don't think there should be one thing that should have a lot of other abilities. Um, maybe. I, I'm, I'm not keen on combining lots of items. Yeah, I mean, it, we have not that specific thing, but we've had discussions in the past within the Ninja team. Um, we don't like you. We get lots of requests to merge things together, and I we kind of worry that it would just keep on. Once we merge these things, then the next step would be merging the next things, and then everyone would just have the one single outfit that does everything. You know, in like in a year or two years' time, if we kept on doing that sort of thing. Um, but we we can look at that particular thing. We'll have a discussion about that at our next ninja meeting. Recently, the rare drop table was updated, and all the animals and beasts were updated for greater drops, which is brilliant, because I now have about 12,000 lobster, which is, is great. Noted, so it was very handy. Um, I found that in this last year, since the updates of all the beast drops, that the rare drop table seems to have gotten worse. Is, is there something that's broken? or, or I mean, I've, like I say, I've got loads of lobsters. That, that's great, but... Nothing rare. Timbo is sad. <laughs> that, was, that was my I'm update. Sorry, Timbo. Um, so the update to rare drop table was just to give a different variety of items, items that like lobsters. Yeah, like lobsters. Well, items that don't necessarily don't uh, don't necessarily see a lot of supply in the market. 
Because obviously we have a lot of analytical data that I will, what I do personally, about what comes into the game, what goes out of the game, how much gold is injected and things like that. And items like lobsters, surprisingly, don't get put into the game very often. Uh, they're used quite a lot by free-to-play, but not necessarily fished. Things like molten glass, which I know everyone loves as a drop. Um, now is the red drop table. Um, is, again, no one's making molten glass, but people are using it. People are making uh, orbs, charging them, things like that. Um, so that was the reasoning behind the red drop table change. Um, I, I think that would work really well for players that, buy, that get their drops and sell it straight away, but I'm more one of those players that doesn't really sell my stuff. I just keep it in the bank and then buy more bank spaces. <laughs> well, yeah, that's understandable. Like, but we have to, I have to balance things around the Grand Exchange, essentially. Right. Um, so people want high-value items. I want to put items in that people want but aren't making. So that's why we put items like those in on which the case, red drop table. In which the red drop table is brilliant. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Good Thank work, you. Timbo. Um, I know that there's not really room for like a Guffix emissary with how they want followers or anything, but is there any chance we could possibly just have a title which says of Guffix rather than of Naragi? Because I, I do like a, the idea of a Guffix style that is green. Really do like the idea of it. Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah. <laughs> just a, a word on titles is. I would say I think titles is something we've been doing a lot recently, and I kind of spoke to Mod Osborne um, about hey, we need to kind of like reduce them out because everything had a title, and uh, it was people were starting to change the colours of them, and it just felt like there was something that we're all trying to one up each other with like what our title is. And I think when you start to look at chat, it kind of like looked really messy, and and so we kind of talked about how. We should reduce the number of titles that we're putting out, maybe make them a bit more about like high level rewards, like it's a badge of achievement. Um, so that's why there's kind of been a reduction of uh, titles in general. But I think that you know, when you've got all the other MSRs, like that's fair play. Yeah. With the mage and range defenders, will there be the same element of random drop chance when you're using it, or will it be something like in the mage training arena that you? buy with pizzazz points? Uh, we were thinking uh, buying with pizzazz points for the maze training arena. I'm not sure if we've decided about the range one yet. Yeah, it, it, will, li it will likely use archery tickets, yeah. Uh, we need to look at archery tickets as well because they're tradable at the minute too. Camera doesn't show scrunched up face reaction. <laughs> <Please note. laughs> if there was any part of the game you could remove, what would it be and why? Rapids. <laughs> I think. Rapids I think is everyone the worst. in the company wants rat pits removed. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned the spring clean sort of thing earlier. I think there's like that gnome copter, like Taurus guy who's just kind of been there like for like the last, ever since I've been at Jagex, you know, speaking to that guy, he's like, oh yeah, they, they've been canceled or whatever. And it's just like, I've been a player for so long now and like, he, he, he was still there telling me they're going, let's get rid he, of it. He's him. been there saying, oh, this isn't here longer than the thing actually was there. <laughs> So, like, you know, we can maybe clear that area for some more cows or something. I don't know. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, Rap, just wrap it for me. Yeah, it causes more problems than it's worth. I would personally say the Crucible. Just put Bounty Hunter back in. Bounty Hunter was fun. Why not? The Craters. Uh, maybe you could uh, place the farming guild there. Place the farming guild yeah. instead of that gnome copter. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Guilds. And uh, I another question. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I go uh, uh, mine harmonized runite, and I also do the dwarven instinct aura, those chests just disappear. You cannot find them in that world because there's a million players on one spot. Uh, like the orts question. Uh, yeah, I can, I can, we can look into that, yeah. Okay. I think we've got a few minutes left. Um, well, yeah. What update have you most regretted making? Yeah, is, is, there some, is there something you've looked back and you think, oh my God, we should never have done that? Well, my own personal boo-boo was um, the dry gauze. 
initial pricing. So I set the price of I set the price of all items on the Grand Exchange for the very first time, and I set dry goals at 500 million back when CoinShare was a thing. And um, yeah, a lot of money was injected that day until I manually changed it to like 100 million. Yeah, I think on the lines of uh, dry goals, we'd based those uh, initially off of uh, Nex on the uh, release, and it was the first EOC boss, so it was kind of balanced towards not knowing what we were balancing, so that would uh, partially be mine as well. <laughs> I think for me, um, it's not so much regretting doing it, it's more releasing and then feeling like it was a waste of time was a lot of like our mini game updates in the last few years because as we say we look at analytics and the numbers just don't change with the number of people you might get like a day one spike of people trying it the changes out but within like a couple of days it's just gone back to the exact same number of people who were playing it beforehand so especially like barbarian assault, uh, sorry barbarian assault we spent a lot of time like graphically updating that and stuff and the changes, like the, the numbers of people playing is minimal, sort of thing. Anything for you guys? I was going to say Barb Assault as well, just because we spent so long on it, and there's some really great stuff in there, but it's just not enticing enough to play uh, in a great deal amount of, uh, uh, well, there's not a huge amount of players. And we've also got problems like having uh, big teams of five people. Um, yeah, me personally, I was in release QA at that time. So release QA, what they do, uh, a week before an update goes live, uh, the team double checks the content, just making sure everything actually works well together. And we got the skill cape graphical rework in, and all of us, well, QA and not only QA, pretty much everyone in the office is a RuneScape player. We saw it, we didn't like it, we thought players are not gonna like it, there's likely gonna be a riot. Um, and we raised our concerns, but not well enough, and they went out. I, I'm going to change my mind to, to that one, because that was kind of my bad. Thanks for reminding me of that. Uh, it was something that I really tried to get all the players' feedback in it, and as a result, it was kind of, we went through lots of, like, through the forms and stuff, and lots of kind of, like, everyone giving their opinions, and as a result, we kind of ended up with something that was very jumbled and in the middle, and not, uh, we should have just gone over the direction and gone, this is it sort of thing. So yeah, I kind of regret that. <laughs> uh, if we uh, have like only like maybe one or two more questions and I'm, af I'm afraid we're then out of time. Hello, um, still in creation. I feel that even if you play non-combat still in creation, to gain bonus experience, it's not really worth it anymore. Like it's actually fast that you just do the skills. Like for example, with the, the new crystal eyes, uh, on teak trees, for example, or the new fishing spot, waterfall fishing. So I feel that um, still in creation is a bit outdated. Can we get more experience from that maybe in the future? Like Barbarian Assault was updated. I would actually agree to an extent, but if you think about it from a bigger picture, um, higher level players, they will obviously have access to Crystal Ice and the other new Seren spells, they'll have access to different training spots, but we're forgetting that Stealing Creation is actually accessible to pretty much anyone. Uh, as far as I remember, you don't need any specific skill requirements. So even though, yes, it is less beneficial for a high level player to be doing it, at the same time, lower level players who will not be having access to certain spells, will not ha be having access to any of the high level skilling spots, it is still going to be beneficial for them. And um, as we mentioned before as well, skill rework, uh, not skill rework, re mi mini game reworks tend to take up a lot of time and we don't often get a lot of um, return from it. Uh, so maybe if it's just uh, balancing perhaps, but beyond that, probably not. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to end that there. Uh, thanks for all your questions. I think we'll just, you obviously like a lot of it is kind of like ninja submissions and stuff. We are around all day as well. So I think we'll just end with, if you guys can just say where you're going to be for the rest of the day. So if anyone wants to find you and give you any more ideas and uh, stuff. So I'll be around the cosplay parade uh, about half two, but then I'll be uh, just wandering around uh, making sure nobody's stolen any penguins. <laughs> kind of hard to miss. Yeah, you'll, prob you'll probably be able to see me. <laughs> 
Um, I'll be just mostly wandering around for the whole day, so if you see me, grab me. I'm not going to be overly busy. Yeah, I'm also not in any set location. I'll be picking up random tasks throughout the day and uh, doing anything that's needed. I'm going to the main stage right now, so come watch me do invention and elite skills. Um, and later on, I'll be in the crypt, so you can come hang, hang out. Cool. And I'm uh, going to be pretty much here all day, so please do come by, give us your questions uh, and submit uh, like ideas for uh, ninja fixes and such. And uh, hopefully you have all a great day. Go watch his uh, talk and uh, we'll see you around. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thank you.